Hello and welcome to my fifth tutorial offering math support to Open University students studying the module TM111 Introduction to Computing and Information Technology. This tutorial will be looking at small numbers and how we can use powers of 10 to represent these small numbers. Let's just remind ourselves about our unit of length. We measure things in meters but we know we can subdivide the meter into smaller quantities. For instance, we can use a unit of measurement called the centimetre, of which there are 100 centimetres in our metre. If we wanted to go down to a smaller unit of measurement, we can use millimetres. Our centimetre is a hundredth of our metre in length. We can represent this as a decimal fraction as 0 0.01. The millimetre is a thousandth of our metre, and we can represent this as a decimal number as 0 0.001. How far can we keep to subdividing? Remember, in a previous tutorial, we looked at getting bigger numbers and we multiplied everything by a thousand. The kilo went to a mega, the mega went to a giga. What happens here if we start dividing by another thousand? So if I divide my millimeter by a thousand, I'll get an even smaller unit of measurement. And we call this the micrometer or micron. This is a millionth of a metre in size, and it can be represented as a decimal number as 0 0.000001. And again, can you see we're beginning to get all these complicated zeros? We don't like having a lot of zeros, because if we ever had to write them out, it makes it very easy to miss one out, and that will change the size of my number quite significantly. So we want a way in which we can eliminate those zeros and represent our numbers sensibly. Just to remind you of what went on in the previous tutorial, we looked at the fact that a thousand can be represented as 10 to the power of 3. A hundred can be represented as 10 to the power of 2. 10 is to the power of 1. And 1 itself can be represented as 10 to the power of 0. Can you see as my number gets smaller, I'm taking 1 off my power. So 10 to the power of 3, I take 1 off, I get 10 to the power of 2. Now, what would happen if we took another, another 1 off that 10 to the power of 0? Well, 0 minus another 1 gives me an integer number minus 1. It's a negative 1. And how far can we keep this going? Well, we can keep going it forever. 10 to the minus 1 is a tenth. We can represent it as 0 0.1. 10 to the minus 2 is a hundredth, represented as 0 0.01. 10 to the minus 3, you can see, is, a th is our thousandth. And as we take one off, we go all the way down to the bottom, and there's our micron at the bottom there, our millionth measurement. Very, very small indeed. Let's just have a quick look at that millionth again and see what it actually represents. A millionth is one over a million. That is one followed by six zeros. And we saw before that we can represent this as 1 over 10 to the power of 6. That is 10 multiplied by itself 6 times. But I can represent this as 10 to the minus 6. So we, we can use this convention of using a negative power is another way of writing 1 over a million or 1 over 10 to the power of plus 6. How far can we go? Let's have a look, look at another small number. And this is a very small number. It's called a nano. It's a billionth. It's very, very small indeed. But let's represent it as a decimal number. So it's 0 point followed by nine places of decimals. We've got a one on the end. It's a very, very small number. Now, last time we saw what we can move the decimal point. Last time for the powers of 10 with large numbers, we moved it to the left. This time I'm going to move it to the right. And each time I move it to the right, I'm going to take one off the power of 10. In this case, because I'm going to move the decimal point nine places, I will end up with one times 10 to the power of minus nine. So this is a way of representing a nano or a billionth of, of our small size uh, by, as represented as 10 to the power of minus nine. What do we do here? How did we convert that number into a sensible representation getting rid of all of those zeros. We basically said, look, if we move the decimal point to the right, we subtract 1 from the power of 10. 
and we keep moving the decimal point until we are left with a significant figure. In this case, it was a one. A significant figure is a number between one and nine inclusive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Each one of those is a significant figure. We want a significant figure and a decimal point. The decimal point comes after the significant figure. For instance, if I had this decimal number, 0 0.0245639, I can write this as 2.45639 by moving that decimal point one, two, three places to the right. So therefore, I will have 10 to the minus 3 as my multiplying term. When we represent numbers in this particular format, we call it scientific notation. And it's a very important way of representing numbers as technologists. We, we tend to use this a lot in our representations and in our mathematical calculations, which we shall have a look at a bit later on. How small can we get with our numbers? Well, we've just looked at a nano. That is a very, very small number, a billionth of my size. But I can divide again by another thousand. That gives me a pico. I can get even smaller. That gives me a femto. Do we need small units as technologists? Well, we're beginning to think about storing information on atoms in molecules. So therefore, we are going to be looking at distances and information being stored on very, very small distances in the future. So yes, as technologists, we will need to get an idea of how very small numbers behave. Again, uh, a little bit more information on small numbers and 10 to the negative power can be found on my uh, my maths website here and there's the URL. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you.